Thanks for watching. I'm Kurt. I just want to show you a few different options on how you can start to build things like guntings and other sorts of destructions from Filipino martial art or Panatukan into your regular shadow boxing. This video is specifically for people who have an interest in the Filipino martial arts, which are usually weapons-based systems, or at least that's how we tend to think about it, but they have really creative, interesting, dynamic, empty hand subsystems. Uh, if you already have a boxing background, you're interested in MMA, keep doing what you're doing. It's probably working great for you. If you want to try to expand your toolbox and try some new things, here's some stuff you could check out. First one, inward gunting. Basic format here for a gunting is that there's a parry motion and a counter punch motion that are happening at the same time. So what we're gonna have is a parry and a punch or a raking motion. It almost has a pulling quality to it. And while sometimes we would express gunting in this nice cross and uncross fashion, like a pair of scissors, which is what gunting means, this one is gonna move in this plane. What that means is maybe I catch a jab and parry the cross, one, two, like that. Well, instead of parry and gunting through this way, I'm gonna parry and gunting this way and reference my own sternum. And so for me, that's thing number one is training with reference points. If I haven't got a partner where their body is the reference point, then I have to start to think, all right, well, what are parts of my body that can make sure I'm finishing in the right place and that I know that this thing is where it's supposed to be? So for this, we'll reference a parry that's more or less shoulder to shoulder. The hand doesn't move much, it moves part way, the shoulder moves part way. That's the parry motion. Then this one is gonna hinge a little bit at the elbow and pull in. There's a slight scoop, but I'm not going out to come back. I'm just bringing it inside. From this position, you can follow up however you want. Since it's not way off track, I don't have to build a reset into my motion. I can just go and hit, 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 whatever style of punching you like. I could still use a more classical backhand motion. For this one going down the center, I just unhinge on that backhand. It could be straight down the middle, but probably there's a little bit of an angling quality so that it goes one and two like that. One and two. Ideally, it happens all in one beat. So as a basic combination, you could go one, two, catch, gunting, and backhand. So that means I'm throwing the one, two, and then I'm receiving a one, two. One, two, catch, and gunting. When I bring this to the middle, I can let that out and follow up. Parry, see the hand doesn't out and back and through. There's not a bunch of reset. It moves, moves here like this. Second application of gunting is the backhand gunting. The reference points here will still be a parry motion, but with the other hand. So if I think of catching the jab, and now a cross or even a wide right, maybe the elbow is flared a little bit, it's not straight down the pipe, there's a little bit of gap here, then I'm gonna fill that gap with the back fist. It might be the forearm that jams right into their arm, right, where you're just hammering in there and following up. So I catch here, I reference shoulder to shoulder. I'm not moving past this shoulder. I'm on the center to this shoulder. And then when this hand extends out, it's gonna more or less unhinge from the elbow. Not a lot of shoulder action. One, two, and it unhinges. And it should be lined up with the parry. So you see this is lined up with my shoulder. Center line catch, parry, unhinge. One and two like that. Again, one and two. Now right away you're gonna to need to recover from this position because we're inside. It's not the worst place to be, but start building in good habits into your shadow boxing. So a lot of times you're taught to go in. So you might see one, two, three. One, two, and three. Now this hand that did the parry motion, one and two here like this. When I elbow, I should keep this here or bring it back. Don't just let it hang out. Obviously this part is wide open. So two good things, catch, inward good thing and backhand, follow up, or catch, backhand good thing, and follow up somehow. Okay, Seco destructions. So a lot of times this is seen as the punch is coming in and you're elbowing the punch. 
Sometimes it's taught as the punch is coming in and you're letting them run into the elbow. Your success rate is probably gonna be higher with this sort of thing, so that your hands are up and you're just getting used to pointing the tip, the point of the elbow, right there on the, the knob of that bone, you're getting used to sliding that up so that it points dead ahead. The reference point being sliding your hand like you're brushing your hair back, up and back. You just kind of keep your hands here ready to go, right, one, two, one, 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 two, this way. So if you work that naturally, you throw some punches, you cover, cover, hit, 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 cover, cover. So if I think maybe I catch the jab, parry an elbow that cross, what kind of follow-up feels good from there, right? Can you imagine parry, when this hits their hand, if that hand recoils, picture that. Imagine that scenario, right? You parry or catch the jab, smash this one. When it recoils, what opens up? What makes sense for you to go in there and start filling those gaps with whatever tools you prefer? Well, that's it, just some basic things to consider if you're trying to implement some of these motions into your solo training. So whatever your reason for training, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching my video and I hope to see you in the next one.